Welcome to table for 92. Element number 33, arsenic. It's number 33 because it has exactly 33 protons within its nucleus. For arsenic, we're cooking up some frutti di mare, fruit of the sea, with white wine sauce, linguine, and Italian bread. Arsenic is found in many foods from apple juice, milk, beef, pork, poultry, and a bunch of others. But rice is especially high in arsenic to a point that it actually is a concern. And that's been increasing in recent years due to arsenic pollution in areas that rice is farmed in. But arsenic is also found in seafood, so that's why we're making some frutti di mare or fruit of the sea. The main difference though between arsenic and rice and arsenic and seafood is between organic and inorganic arsenic. Organic arsenic can be bad for you, but not nearly as bad as the inorganic forms. And it's not like the difference between, is it Portland organic, Oregon organic, or USDA organic? It's the actual chemistry definition. Organic arsenic is bonded with complex carbon atoms and is found naturally in seafoods and other foods. For example, it's found in arsenobetaine, the most abundant organic arsenic compounds found in seafood, but it's relatively harmless. On the other hand, the inorganic arsenic refers to the more simple compounds of arsenic, the pure metallic substance of arsenic bonded with non-carbon atoms. So organic bonded with carbon, inorganic, not. Arsenic is poison to humans. Like since antiquity, it has been known as the king of poisons. If exposed to large doses of arsenic, it really affects like everything in the body from your skin flaking off to nerve damage and increased cancer risks. I work part-time as a plumber's assistant in New Jersey and I have to do water tests for arsenic all the time because in my neck of the woods, Arsenic is found naturally in well water, and it all has to do with the geology around here. I'm in the Piedmont section of Jersey, which is a geological feature. It's kind of like the foothills to the Appalachian Mountains, and the shale that is buried under us has naturally occurring arsenic within it. So private wells that pump water through those shales are more exposed to arsenic, and arsenic is really quite insidious. Like, it's tasteless, it's odorless, and in long-term, low-level exposure, it can be asymptomatic on the outside, but like messing you up on the inside. But you know, it's not just here in Jersey. It's, it's found all over the US and all over the world. And this is the inorganic arsenic that is bonded with oxygen atoms. And that's what's so bad for you. But arsenic has a long and complex relationship with human history. It's one of the nine elements on the periodic table that would have been known to ancient peoples. And it had many uses. Like you always have to remember, ancient peoples had no knowledge of elements as we think of them today. For a very long time, a lot of people believed the universe was all part of the four Four elements, water, earth, air, and fire. Arsenic has been known for a very long time. We have writings from Aristotle referring to an arsenic sulfide called sandarac or red lead in the fourth century BCE. But like thousands of years before that, arsenic was used in copper as an alloy to make bronze. Since at least the seventh millennia BCE, arsenic copper had been used firstly in what's now Western Iran and Eastern Turkey, but ancient peoples probably didn't know they were working with arsenic because arsenic is found naturally in copper ores. So, you know, the contamination's just inevitable. The other kind of bronze that ancient peoples made was tin and copper together. And we absolutely know, like, they intentionally added tin to copper to make bronze. So it's still murky if the ancient peoples using arsenic bronze really knew they were working with it, but we do know that working around arsenic is not very healthy for ancient peoples involved in bronze smelting. It's like a dangerous dangerous job regardless because you're working around melted metals and then you add the arsenic on top of that all in the air. I mean, yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. So the pasta just started, so I'm gonna start the seafood by sauteing some shallots, then adding some pressed garlic, some fresh basil and some red pepper flakes. Now that that's fragrant, I'm adding the shrimp and the scallops and the squid. And when they're almost done, I'm gonna take them out, deglaze the Dutch oven with white wine, put in the clams and the mussels, close the lid for like five or six minutes just until they're starting to open up, and then put the scallops and the shrimp and the calamari back into the pot. So scholars will often point out that in the ancient world, the patron gods of craftsmen and especially metal workers, like the Greek god Hephaestos, its Roman counterpart Vulcan, the Teutonic god Wieland, the Scandinavian Volunder, and the Finnish god Ilmarinen were all lame or like walked with a limp. So it's kind of thought that craftsmen and metal workers made their gods in their own arsenic poisoned images. It totally makes sense. Like you would want your gods to reflect your own personal life and what you've been through. And if that includes 
getting messed up by arsenic or other dangerous occupations, you would want your patron god to reflect that. But I can't not talk about arsenic and its ridiculous history as being used as a poison. Like before I said arsenic had been called the king of poisons, well, it's also called the poison of kings precisely because arsenic is tasteless and odorless. And it's a pretty ideal poison to slip into somebody's wine or roasted peacock as they would eat in ancient Rome. Yeah, apparently arsenic poisoning was so bad in ancient Rome, especially as a way to, you know, poison your political rivals, that during a particularly unstable time when the dictator Sola was in charge, he issued the Lex Cornelia, probably the earliest law prohibiting poison. So, uh, yeah, it took him that long to do that. Later on, though, in Renaissance Italy in like the 13, 14, 1500s, arsenic poisoning again became the preferred way to get rid of your enemies. The famous families of the time were all involved, probably, but the Borgia were kind of nuts with it. This is kind of scandalous, but this is what a lot of scholars will say about this family. They used arsenic poisoning to advance their family into some of the richest and most influential circles in all of Italy, maybe like in all of Europe at that time. And their pinnacle was their patriarch of the family, Roderick de Borgia, got himself elected Pope in 1492. He took the name Alexander VI. Yeah, and you know, popes were uh, pretty naughty back then. Alexander VI had a bunch of kids and was kind of a gangster, honestly. Like the Borgias would assassinate their rivals just so the church, which again, they controlled, could confiscate their property and wealth due to their untimely deaths. That's why there's been so many recent TV shows made about them. I mean, they were really just insane with power and status, but this would kind of come back to bite them in the ass. So the story goes that Cesare, one of the Pope's sons and captain general of the papal army, and uh, he was also horribly disfigured because he had syphilis and uh, was actually the inspiration for Machiavelli's The Prince. Him and his father were gonna be hosting a bunch of cardinals from the church and Cesare and his father arrived early to the party and decided to have a servant bring them a bottle of wine. Whether by accident or not, the servant brought the wrong bottle, the bottle that was supposed to be used to enrich themselves through homicide. And so yeah, the Pope died and Cesare survived by, get this, killing a mule, climbing inside its carcass, like Luke in Empire Strikes Back with the Tauntaun. Apparently there was like some ancient superstition in that era that if you were poisoned by arsenic, you should like kill a mule and get inside its carcass. And that's the only time in recorded history, I guess that worked. But yeah, arsenic is responsible for so many deaths throughout history. Like even though arsenic was known as a poison, it was used in the Victorian era in England as makeup because you know, it's a poison. So if you ingested it, it would give somebody like very pale gaunt looking skin. And during that time, pale skin was a sign of the upper class, showing they did not work in the fields like all those peasants. So women would actually eat like arsenic wafers to give them that, you know, fashionable, I'm slowly dying look that was all the rage. There you go, beautiful Frutti de Mare with the not terribly harmful organic arsenic. Thank you, see you next time. So smash that subscriber button or something, please.